Hi everyone! Welcome to the Open Source Intelligence Fundamentals course by Cybrary. My name is Tino Šokić and I will be your host for this fun and hopefully interesting course. But before we continue, please allow me to tell you a little bit about myself. As I always say in any of my security trainings, I think it's my obligation to, to let you know who I am and am I at least credible to talk about this topic. Because you will probably do a little bit of OSINT on me. As I've mentioned, my name is Tino Šokić. I am a cybersecurity professional from Croatia, Europe. I have over 10 years of IT experience, professionally speaking. And by that I mean that I make a living out of working in the IT sector for over 10 years now. I went to law school but decided to involve professionally into, with IT. And one of the reasons was that I was into computers since I was a kid. When I say I'm uh, in IT, uh, I always point out that I'm not a programmer or a developer, rather a systems engineer. I grew up professionally with switches, cabling, firewalls, servers, system rooms, data centers. I worked and still work on various certifications like Cisco, Microsoft, Microtech and finished lots of trainings and seminars in regard to cybersecurity. Also went for various uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming trainings and psychotherapy stuff which helped me in my social engineering studies. And open source intelligence was always involved, even before when I didn't have a name for it. I used uh, various techniques and methods to get information so I could make an informed decision about something. Besides career stuff, I enjoy reading, running, singing and guitar playing. But one of the things that I especially like doing is uh, legal email fish tests for my customers, which involves uh, a, lot of so a lot of social engineering. The picture in the slide is related to fishing, not real catching of the fish. I also do live physical social engineer tests like pretending to be a new, new employee in a company. But I won't bother you with that now. Now that we have met, we can start the course. And the first thing I would like to point out are prerequisites, which in my opinion would be beneficial for you to have to understand everything so you could go easier in your further studies concerning the open source intelligence. If you read the newspapers or you surf the internet, then you already have all the prerequisites for this course. But I have divided this into two sections for which I mean are the most uh, relevant for this course. What to know and what to have. So let's proceed with the what to know part. It would be highly recommended and appreciated that you are familiar with the basic IT terminology and the concepts. That also includes cybersecurity since OSINT is very much involved in the cybersecurity framework. In my personal example, I come from the technical side of IT and I'm very much interested in the technical side of OSINT. It is easier to understand the conce concepts when you know the basics how things work. Literally basic things like how does the internet work and why does it look the way it looks and so on. Next would be Linux and Linux-like operating systems. Since many tools which we will mention and show are developed to work on that kind of operating systems. There are great resources on Cybrary for you to check out. Then there is Python and yes, I have mentioned that I'm not a programmer but knowing the basics of any programming language can only be a plus and since we are involved in cybersecurity, Python is the right language. Python is very popular in the cybersecurity community and because of its human-friendly syntax and ease of use, it is a great and powerful language and most of the OSINT tools are written in that programming language. Also, please check out the basic Python course on Cybrary. The question what to have. From a hardware perspective, you need a computer and a smartphone and of course an active internet connection which allows you to acquire all this beautiful information and data. And lastly, your curiosity and imagination. Because your investigations are limited only by your mind and since there are numerous ways to learn about your target, you will use your imagination to get to them. When I mention target audience, I have to say that for this course, that is quite wide. Actually, the topic of open source intelligence is a big one, but I have narrowed it down and I would list the potential audience as following. IT and cybersecurity professionals would be my first pick because I'm an IT guy. 
Then I would mention law enforcement and military personnel. A big part of their work is based on intelligence that they gather and make important decisions based on that information. Then there would be companies and their employees. Besides uh, security teams, I would like to mention human resources, and you will see later in the course why did I put an emphasis on them. Then there are journalists, private investigators, parents and teachers. Actually, here I would like to put an emphasis on parents and teachers, because I really encourage them to use this kind of knowledge to protect our youngest. In many households, children know more about the, the internet and its usage than the adults, and that poses a problem. They are in a position to potentially hide their activity and content online. Lastly, I'm aware that uh, these techniques and tools can be used by anyone whose intents are malicious and in a way evil, but that is the risk, like with any knowledge out there. So please don't be malicious. If you were wondering why you should even take this course, I will try to tell you now. There are a handful of reasons why you should want to learn about open source intelligence, especially if you are in the cybersecurity profession and the community. Some of the reasons outlined here are knowledge. If you like to learn new and exciting things and you are already involved with cybersecurity, then you are on the right track. This is an opportunity to expand your expertise and advance your career uh, with the usage of OSINT knowledge and the know-hows. Believe me, the amount uh, of knowledge that you are going to come across could easily overwhelm you, because there are many different technologies involved in the open source intelligence process. Next would be defense and protection. Learn to protect yourself and your organization, because all the information and data that you can find uh, via the OSINT tools and techniques, the bad guys can also find them and use them. And third, fun. I have to tell you the truth, OSINT is a real fun ride, but at the same time it is quite scary. People write, share, record, send enormous amounts of data and most of the times without even knowing that they are doing it, and all of that data is publicly available. Also one of the reasons is the lack of awareness and the feeling of false security. Here is where you come to play and have a chance to enhance the overall cybersecurity posture of a person or an organization and have fun along the way. Now we are going to do a little course overview. After this introduction module number one, in which, uh, which we are still in, we are going to move on to module, module number two called theory. And I'm very sorry about that, but we have to start with the definitions part. All jokes aside, in module 2, first we will try to put a label on open source intelligence, actually define it, its types, its usage and the ethics behind it. Then we will move on to the module number 3, which I called the OSINT playground. And here we will start to prepare our environment for a secure and efficient OSINT investigations. The next module, number 4, Tools and Techniques, is probably one of the modules you are most interested in. And I agree, it is interesting, but we need a good preparation to be successful and efficient with these tools, because there are a lot of them out there and we will go through ones which I think are most relevant for doing a basic OSINT investigation. Then in module number 5, I will talk about sock puppets which is one of my favorite terms in OSINT, and I won't spoil the fun by telling you what it is now. After that, we'll brush on the OSINT defense in the module 6. Actually, when I say OSINT defense, I mean on operational security, or OPSEC, in which we will go over how to protect yourself or your organization. Plus, to show you a little and pretty simple examples how people actually share their information all over, probably without any awareness that they are actually doing it. And in the last module, number 7, we will conclude our OSINT Fundamentals course journey with a few recommendations where to go next. Throughout the course, I will show you how to use some of the tools and techniques that we are going to discuss. Also, don't forget to check out the resources section of this course for additional information. In this introduction module number one, you got to know me, your host for the, this course. Then we talked about the prerequisites, target audience, we tried to answer the question why you should even take this course. And in the end, we did a quick overview of the topics that we are going to discuss. Now let's move on to our second module called Theory, so see you in the next video.